Welcome to your traditional shakuhachi lesson number four. We're going to get right in, and if you have any questions, well, look at some of the earlier versions, and you'll see that these songs get increasingly difficult. So uh, they are simple children's songs from the 19th century, uh, so you'll get a chance to learn how to play the shakuhachi and hear some nice folk music as well. But as the traditional method goes, we start by putting the flute down and singing. You sing along with your teacher, and you put your hands on your legs, the one two beat. First song we're going to do here is uh, Yu Yaki Ko Yaki, and it's the Sunset Afterglow. E -ri -ri -ro -ri 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 -ji -tsu -tsu -re -ji There's one thing that's a little difficult, which is to go from the low octave, re, which is always a low octave, to the high octave, su. So that's the high octave. That's a low octave. The difference, no difference in the fingering, except that you blow more forcefully. And in a more targeted way towards the very split edge. And if you're having a little difficulty, hang on to the end of this video. I'm going to show you what happens at night. If you play with a candle in front of you, you can actually direct your air in the proper way. Just as a practice, but make sure you do it safely. Here's the re, and here's the su. So if my lips are open, wider and I'm playing a little softer, I get the low octave, harder. Now, as you take your lessons, you're going to be looking to play at a high octave and it's just not going to come out. Your teacher's going to go along, so just go along with it. Don't stop the music, just play along. So if some of the notes don't come, that's okay. Uh, you don't want to break the melody of the song. You heard your teacher sing it, it's in your mind. So just relax into it and we'll see what we can do. Now I'm singing just as best I can, and maybe it's not in the right key for you. It doesn't really matter if you hit the notes, miss the notes when you're singing. I just you get to hear the melody. Okay, now we're on to the clapping of the shoes, Japanese shoes. That's the sound of your feet. When children walk, and you hear that sound. Uh, so it's a fun song. Tsu tsu re chi ri ri ro ri. Chi chi re tu tu re chi re tu re chi chi ri ro tu ro tu ri ro ro ri chi ri ro ro tu ro tu ri ro ri chi tu chi re tu re ri. Rory chi tu re tu re chi re tu
Minato is the harbor bay. It's got some Marys in it. It's it, Mary is with your head down. Here's a re. Put your head down, which means pull your chin back. Um, you know, it's not quite flat enough. The traditional way to make it a little flatter is to add a little bit of finger on the top hole, on the four hole. So here's the re. Then re Mary. And so you'll have to just get used to that sound uh, because you will just have to guess where that note is. So it comes with time. Some people are better <laughs> than others, so that's the case. For me, it took time. So um, when you hear that, when you see that little tick, that little tick mark over there, that's the remarry. So um, here we go. Su re chi chi re ro re re chi re tsu re chi re ro re re tsu re tsu ro re ro re chi re chi chi tsu tsu It's a nice song, but it's hard to play that last phrase. It's hard to go from a chi to a re mary when your air has to be blown in a different way, just for that one note. And then back to the chi. So uh, that's what makes Sakalachi challenging, uh, but rewarding in the end. So this, ah, this one's going to be a little tricky. It's the, uh, the beauty of nature, Tenin no Bi. And um, it's got a lot of Marys in it. The one I just showed you, but it's got a Chi Mary. So here's an upper octave Chi. And the Chi Mary, pull, pull your head back and shade your finger. It's a very pretty note. And there's another one. And the high octave is a he. Re Mary. Of what we just played. So this. High octave. It's a very pretty note. There's also a ha three. A ha three, it means hole number three is shaded and your head is down. Now where's my air going? My air is going <laughs> way down here. You know, when you play the shakwachi, everybody struggles exactly, and you know, how do you get all those notes to come out? And there's little tricks. And uh, one of the tricks I have is to when I play a note, just say a re. I'm thinking about the air going through this and hitting on the inside of the flute. I'm, I'm kind of targeting the inside here and letting some of it go as on the outside. 
that might help. Or it might help to try to, like I said, put a candle across the room, maybe down right about there. Of course, if you blow louder, it will go to the high octave automatically. But there's a way to help it along, and that you can bring your lips closer together. And the way physics is, you force the same amount of air or even water through a smaller space. It starts to speed up. And that's a way of um, accelerating the air. Instead of just blowing hard for one note, you move your lips in together, and that accelerates the air just for a second there. So that's how you go to the high octave easily. I'm going, my lips are going like this, and like this, like this, like this. And that works for me. So that's why we say, just practice, and you'll see. Re, re, ro, re, ro, re, chi, re, chi, re, yi, chi, re, chi, re, chi, It's a really beautiful song. And there are words in the score, so if you can read uh, hiragana and you can read Japanese, you can have somebody sing along. So, here we go. Now there's something else about the Marys, which is kind of interesting. So if you put more holes in a shakuhachi, all the notes would be loud. But if you don't, and you want to play the in-between the whole notes, like a, here's a su, but that su Mary is very soft. And that's as loud as it goes. I mean, you can try to press it to be louder, but it won't go much louder than that, because your finger is covering so much of the hole that there's very little air coming out. So, it, you know what, it's part of the style of shakuhachi playing. And so it's, imagine, imagine that, um, you know, your mind will fill in some of the notes. You hear the pitch a little bit and your mind won't really notice, but it adds to the texture and the beauty of the shakuhachi. So these notes, like uh, he Mary, it's a soft, beautiful note. Here's a he. And that other note, that high note was a, he go, go is go is five, five holes in the back. It's the five hole is open. The ha, san, ha san, san is three. This is the three hole, one, two, three. That means the three hole is open, ha san. And the thumb is open, 
and your head is down, it's easier to play if you shade it, if you shade the three. And try to play it sweetly. So this no this, you know, this is hard if you're learning the shakrachi. You have your head down, you're playing softly, and when you get to the very next note, if it's a regular karu note, head up, your head goes back up again. So your head is going up and down, up and down. So you want to play these songs slowly and try to reach for it and take your time with the shakuhachi and uh, it'll eventually come. Some flutes are harder to play than others, I can tell you that. So when it comes to easier played flutes, I would say this is not your model. This here is a, uh, I'll call it a wide bore flute, which means it's wider across the top. The, the bottom is always a little smaller, the bell end, but the ambulature is uh, a little difficult because you have, your air has to reach across. And to get a high octave, you target, you target that edge. You try to blow a thin stream, and your muscles just don't have the ability to do that when you ask them to. But if you do it a lot, like play the shakuhachi a lot, you'll develop these muscles in your lips. You'll be able to narrow your lips down and force a lot of air through. So um, you can't just play it until you get there. But of course, the low rock is much easier. So it depends on your lips, and it also depends on the flute you're playing. And here's a plastic flute. This is the plastic U flute. It's a smaller bore. It's a pretty ordinary size bore. In fact, I have an engineering tool that I can measure my, my bores with. Not to get into the numbers, but let's just say that if I look at the inside of this, this won't fit in here. This is smaller. So this diameter, that wobble, means that this is going to be easier to play. Oh, that was easier. And a PVC pipe is even smaller. So this PVC pipe, it's that size, see it wobbles around. That little sixteenth of an inch in here means a lot when you're playing the shuffle hockey. And so uh, it's a challenge. So make sure that you don't play a flute that's impossible to play and uh, or difficult to play until you really get, get your footing in shakuhachi. So uh, take a look at the uh, video I made last night and you can see with the candle what that angle is that you're targeting. Let's say, hmm, maybe this would be a good angle. Try. Well, how close should your lips be? Well, you just got to try. Um, if you go to a teacher, and you should get a shakuhachi teacher, uh, because they can give you personal help, one-to-one. -one. Uh, you won't get, in, get that in a group lesson. So, you know, when you look at the shape of your lips and your flute, you can see uh, that everybody is different, and you'll need to uh, try different things, and somebody can help you along in that process. So, uh, I wouldn't be concerned about playing every note in every piece, and that's not going to happen. But eventually it will happen. So uh, even though these are children's songs, um, they're beautiful songs, and they actually encourage me to practice because I, I love these songs. Uh, they're Meiji era, they're the 19th century folk songs of the day. So I um, hope you uh, enjoy your practice sessions and uh, keep working on the flute. It really pays off in the end, and it did for me. So thanks a lot. Think about directing the air when you play through the shakuhachi. So there's the candle. Do you blow forward, straight down, at an angle? What angle? Here we go. That's it. How about here? Not at all. What about high? Okay, so I would say that the air is blowing this direction and maybe even lower. I have all of this area to blow. So think about blowing exactly in one spot, making your lips accurate, getting close to that edge, and then doing the blowing. So what about the upper octave? What's happening with the upper octave? You 
see the force of the air? It's making that candle just about go out. What about from further back? I see. This is it. This is the exact angle for the high octave row. So what I'm actually getting at is if you're playing the low octave row, there's a lot of forgiveness because you can blow any one of these angles. But when you want to get the high octave, it's got to be the precise angle to get that candle to blow out. You have to really concentrate on a long funnel of air. So uh, that's how you get the high octave. Okay, let's take it further. Now, the rows, low, Oh, that's Otsu, right? Kan. And the high Kan, the Daikan, which is you close all the top holes and the thumb is open, where does the air go for that? It seems to be even closer to the flute. I'm telling you that every note has a slightly different angle to blow at. Well, maybe the optimum angle is, is best for every note. Maybe there's a special angle that you can get that beautiful tone. And you know, it does depend on your lips and the flute. But here's the thing. A well-made chakuhachi should allow you to just blow at the same direction and have all the notes come out nice and evenly. So, it's a matter of refinement, but I would say the problem is, are you getting that high octave in the first place, getting it where you want it, anytime you want it, you reach for it and it's just not there. So that's when you wanna pay attention to what I'm, I'm saying right now. Think about finding that exact spot. Now, if you're new to the shakuhachi, you might find it's really difficult to just get the high octave. But the thing is, once you found it, you got your lips in the right angle, you're sort of blowing, you know, you've got this over, but you're blowing down half of the air in and half of the air out. Once you hit it, you found that sweet spot. Keep playing long tones on that note, that easiest high octave for you to get, just whether it's whatever note it is. And you'll start to remember, your lips will remember. It's not your brain, but it's your lips that will remember what that pitch is. You get that note solid and then you can work the other ones off that. I hope that helps. I know it's not easy.